We use our smartphones for all sorts of activity all the time, amassing tons of information about what we do, where we go, who we talk to, all with just one little device. That makes smartphones very helpful when police are doing investigations. If they can get into the smartphone of a suspect, chances are they could answer a lot of questions very quickly. It's pretty common for police to go to a cell phone for evidence, but they need a search warrant to do it and the technological means to easily access that data. To understand this information, you should know a few terms first. What I mean by data is not just the information on your phone as you see it on your interface. I also mean the phone's metadata. That's data about data, like a timestamp of when you took a photo, for example, or a GPS note saying where you were when you took it. A lot of information like that can be found on a phone's hard drive, and sometimes police want it. If they have a search warrant, police can undergo a process called imaging. When they copy a phone's hard drive without necessarily needing to open the phone, and with that copy, they have the data they need. But sometimes police run into a problem, and that's when a phone's hard drive is encrypted. That means the data on the hard drive is translated into a secret code that can only be opened by a sophisticated key that only the user knows. Encryption is optional on most smartphones, really meant for security if a user wants it. Yet Apple and Google have, until very recently, maintained a way to override even that encryption. It's called backdoor access, and while Apple and Google have their own reasons for it, it's really awesome for police because police could always bring a search warrant for an encrypted phone to Apple and Google, who could turn off that encryption. And are legally compelled to do so by a court order. So now that you know how it works, you should know that backdoor access allows police to get copies of a phone's contact book, calendar, notes, to-do lists, music, and all that metadata on the hard drive. Not to mention all the correspondence that shows up on it, like call logs, texts, or even emails. If it's stored on the hard drive, it's all there. But recent developments in data security from Apple and Google have changed the game. Now, Apple and Google have decided to up the encryption on their new smartphones and make it default for all users, which will cover almost all the data on the hard drive of their new smartphone devices. Here's the root of the issue: Apple and Google are removing their own capability to turn off that encryption, meaning that if data is encrypted. Apple and Google don't have the capability to unencrypt that data, whether police have a warrant or not. That's right, no more backdoor. So this new encryption should mean that only the user can access user information, right? And for law enforcement, just too bad. Not quite. The reach of this new encryption is actually very limited. It only covers what's stored on the physical hard drive of a cell phone and nowhere else. So here's the trick: if you back up your information to the cloud, which many people do, that's outside the realm of this encryption. And if your data is up there, police can get a warrant to search that location, and boom, they can jump the hurdle of encryption, no problem. The same thing can happen if you use the cloud to sync your phone with your other devices, which again many people do for convenience. Who wouldn't want their data accessible from their phone, their iPad, their laptop, and their work computer? It may be convenient, but it's outside the bounds of this new encryption. What's difficult is that, according to some tech experts, sometimes users don't realize, or at least they don't pay attention to, what's stored on their device and what's elsewhere. Even outside of cloud backups, law enforcement still has access to person-to-person -person communication as well. Like those texts, phone calls, emails, even connecting to a website. When you put your information in transit, that's not exclusively on your phone's hard drive, so it's not encrypted. And that, experts say, the government has very good visibility into. This is all to say that some data is on lockdown through this new encryption, but police and government access to lots more information can still be had. For some people, that's a good thing for public safety and for police to do their job, but for others, not so much. 
And if that's how you feel, this encryption is seen as a step for user security, albeit a small one. I'm Katie Straub, reporting for the Peninsula Press, a project of the Stanford Graduate Program in Journalism.